Hey guys, we're back. Uh, right now we're gonna be starting on the next section, 13-3, which is radian measures. Well, angles can be measured in degrees and we're used to measuring angles in degrees, but now we're gonna learn something where you can actually measure angles in radian measures. So instead of degrees, you can use radians or degrees. And a lot of, uh, of these trigonometrical functions use radian measures or degrees or both. So we have to learn how to use radians and degrees, and we have to be able to convert between radians and degrees and see how that looks on the unit circle. So the first thing I want you to do is to copy the definition of radian. Radian, here the definition says, like degrees, again, we're on 13-3, page 726 of your book, radian measures. Like degrees, radians measure the amount of rotation from the initial side to the terminal side of an angle. Initial side is the first line. The terminal side is where the second line meets. Ends, right? We talked about that already. Uh, if we look over here at this little unit circle that I drew, what I'm going to tell you now is that a half a rotation is 180 degrees. That's actually equal to pi radians. And a full rotation we learned before was 360 degrees around the unit circle. And that's going to be twice the half rotation, which is going to be 2 pi radians. So 360 degrees equals 2 pi radians. 180 degrees equals pi radians. Okay, so again, so let's look at example one. We're going to start by converting. We're going to find the radian measure of 60 degrees. To convert from radians to degrees, I'm going to multiply by pi over 180. In B of example one, it wants us to start with, find the degree measure of an angle in radians, which is 5 pi over 2 radians. To convert from uh, radians to degrees, we're going to multiply by pi, 180 over pi. So these are the two conversions that we have to memorize. Again, if you're given degrees and you want to convert it to radians, multiply by pi over 180. If you're given radians and they're asking you to convert it to degrees, multiply by 180 over pi. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. It's pretty simple. So 60 degrees, I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now real quick. 60 degrees. Again, I'm gonna multiply that by pi over 180. Again, you're multiplying a whole number by a uh, fraction. So it's gonna be the same thing, one, um, uh, 60 over 180. And again, we don't want decimal answers, we wanna keep them as just uh, fractions in reduced form. If I look at 60 over, 60 over 180, all I want to do is keep it in uh, this form, but I want to reduce it. If I divide both by 10, I'm going to get 6 pi over 18. If I divide again by 6, I'm going to get pi over 3. 1 pi over 3. The answer is pi over 3. So 60 degrees is pi over 3. Let's see how we can do that on the graphing calculator. So if I wanted to reduce 60 over 180, I can go alpha y equals enter. Again, you don't have to do it on the calculator. You can just do it normal. 60 over 180. And press enter, and it'll reduce it for you, 1 over 3. Again, it reduced it for me. Or you can reduce it by hand. The answer is 60 degree angle measure is the same as pi over 3 radian measure of the same angle. Okay? So let's do the same thing this time, B, and we're going to start with 5 pi over 2 radians. We're going to convert it to degrees. Again, if you're starting with radians and you're converting it to degrees, we're going to multiply by 180 over pi. So let's go ahead and do that. 5 pi over 2. And then we're going to multiply that by the conversion factor, 180 over pi. You know you're doing it right because the pi's will end up canceling out. Isn't the, this pi in the numerator, this pi in the denominator? When you divide pi divided by itself, they just cancel out. It's like 3.14 divided by 3.14 equals 1. So all we're left with is 5 times 180. 5 times 180 is 900 divided by 2. Divided by 2 equals 450. 450 degrees. The answer is 450 degrees. So 5 pi over 2 radians is 450 degrees. And remember I told you that 2 pi was equal to 360 degrees? Well, 5 pi over 2, isn't that 2.5 pi if you reduce it? Right? So 2 pi was 360 degrees, and another half of pi is going to be another 
90 degrees on top of it, half a pi is 90 degrees, that's where you get the 450 degrees from. So 2 pi went around the whole time at 360 degrees, and then the 0.5 went, a oh, full pi is 180, right? And then uh, half of a pi is going to be the 90 degrees. That's where we got that from. Okay, we're going to do, uh, we're going to jump. Now, now what I want you to do is quick check number one, A and B in your book, page 727. I wrote them down here. But I'm going to jump to example two. You can do quick check number one when you get a chance. Right now, I want you to jump to example two and make sure you're copying this down. We're going to continue with the same stuff. We're going to find the degree measure of negative 3 pi over 4 radians. Again, if you're starting with radians and you want to change it to degrees, you're going to multiply by 180 over pi. One way of remembering this, and I'll show you why in a minute. Negative 3 pi over 4. If you're converting um, radians to degrees, you want to get rid of pi. So the only way I can get rid of pi is that pi would be in the denominator, right? Because now I know that pi divided by pi equals 1, and, I, and you, they cancel out. So if I multiply by pi over 180, it would be wrong. I'd still have pi in the answer. Pi times pi is 2 pi. If I multiply by 180 over pi, the pi's cancel out. And then I know I did it right. Well, okay, anyways, let me go ahead and do that. The pi's will cancel out, like I said. I'm going to multiply negative 3 times 180 and divide by 4. Negative 3 times 180 equals negative 450, negative 540, sorry, and divide that by 4 and see what you get. And I think negative, uh, decimal answers are okay in this situation, negative 135 degrees. So negative 3 pi over 4 is negative 135 degrees. It makes sense to me because remember I told you pi radians is going to be 180 degrees. Remember I told you that before? Well, if pi radians is 180 degrees, isn't 3 fourths a little less than a full pi? Well, then 3 fourths of pi is going to be less than 180 degrees, and then 135 is less than 180 degrees. This happens to be negative, so you're going to the right, not to the left. You're, you're uh, rotating clockwise when it's negative, not counterclockwise. So remember that. Here I'm asking you in part B of example 2 to find the radian measure of 27 degrees. So if you're starting with degrees and you're changing its radians, we're going to multiply by pi over 180. Do you have to just memorize these two, basically? So 27 degrees, I'm changing that to radians, therefore I have to multiply by pi over 180. Again, you have to memorize that. To do that, it's like saying 27 over 1 times the fraction pi over 180. You're just going to multiply the numerators together. You're going to get 27 over pi, 27 pi over 180. And then reduce. Again, you can reduce it by figuring out what divides both 27 and 180 evenly. I think 9 does. But regardless, if you have a calculator, and if you don't, you can do it by hand. But if you have a calculator, alpha y equals enter, 27. You don't have to worry about pi. Put pi in the final answer, but... 180, enter. I'm just reducing the fraction. It's 3 over 20. I want to keep it as the exact answer. I don't want to divide 3 divided by 20 get a decimal answer. And then remember about pi. It's 3 pi over 20 radians is the answer. With radians, I don't want decimal answers. With degrees, it's okay to have decimal answers. Okay, now go ahead and do a quick check number 2. I'm going to go ahead and do example 3. When you get a chance to do quick check number 2. Here's example 3 now. Example three is now, remember how we learned how to do cos finding the exact values of cosine and sine of degree measures? We're going to do the same exact thing using the unit circle, but this time we're going to use radian measures instead of degrees, which is kind of simple. Step one is go ahead and convert radians to degrees. Pi over four radians, what is that equal to? Well, pi over four equals how much degrees? I want that conversion factor. Remember the conversion factor? If I'm converting radians to degrees, I'm going to multiply by 180 over pi. And you remember, pi in the numerator, pi in the denominator will cancel out. All you're left with is 180 over pi. I'm sorry, over 4. Sorry, the pi is canceled out. Well, what's 180 divided by 4? And it's going to be 45. Yep, 45. Okay. So it's 45 degrees. Now that I know that pi over 4 is 45 degrees, all I got to do is find the cosine of 45 degrees and the sine of 45 degrees. And you remember how to do that? Well, you draw a unit circle and you find the angle measure of 45 degrees. Remember that makes a special right triangle when you do that. And it happens to be a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. 
45, 45, 90 triangle, which is a special right triangle, if you remember that. And you remember that the side lengths are, um, are square root of 2, are related by the square root of 2? Well, we do know that this is a unit circle, so the radius of the unit circle is 1. So the length from here to here happens to be 1. That's the hypotenuse, side opposite 90 degree angles. These two sides ha have to be 45, 45. Okay, so that's now it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. The short legs are related by a square root of 2. Remember, since the hypotenuse is the longest side, if you're trying to find the shorter side, you divide by the square root of 2. So these side lengths are 1 over the square root of 2. Remember, you have to um, rationalize the denominator by multiplying top and bottom by the square root of 2. Remember that? You can't have square roots in the denominator. So I'm going to do that real quick to see what 1 over square root of 2 is. Well, it's going to be square root of 2 over... Square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is square root of 4, which equals 2. This is the answer. Well, the horizontal length is square root of 2 over 2. Isn't that the x-coordinate? Anything going left and right is the x-coordinate. This gives me the x-coordinate of this point. If the length from here to here is square root of 2 over 2, that means the coordinates of this point, the x-coordinate, is square root of 2 over 2. Well, the vertical length from here to here is the y-coordinate. The vertical length is 1 over square root of 2. We learned that that is equal to square root of 2 over 2. And the vertical length is square root of 2 over 2, which makes the y-coordinate square root of 2 over 2. Where there are the coordinates of my point here on the unit circle, which tells me the answer for the cosine of 45 degrees, which is pi over 4 is equal to 45 degrees, and the sine of 45 degrees, which again is pi over 4. So let me go ahead and give you the answers. Now it's pretty simple. Remember, the cosine of an angle measurement is the x-coordinate of the point on the unit circle. The x-coordinate is square root of 2 over 2. So the answer here is square root of 2 over 2. The y-coordinate is... The y, uh, the sine of pi over 4 radians is the sine of 45 degrees, which is the y-coordinate of that same point, which again is square root of 2 over 2. If I want to know what the decimal equivalent is of that, I'm just going to divide. I'm going to go alpha y equals enter, or we can divide them. Second function square root of 2 over 2, enter. I get about 0.707. Here's the exact answer right here. We're done. But I want to know what the approximate answer because I want to know how to get this answer. Approximately 0 0.707. Using the calculator. What if I did the sign in quick check number three is asking us to use the calculator to find these same exact answers. But here's what you have to do before you do it. If I just do the cosine of alpha y equals enter, Second function square root of 2 over 2. Right arrow, parentheses, enter. I'm not going to get the right answer. I wonder why. It should have been 0 0.707, right? Well, let me tell you why. Go to mode. Right now, look at where my calculator is on. It's on the degree mode. Remember we did degree modes when we were measuring degree angles? We had to put it in degree mode. Well, right now we're measuring in radians, so we got to put it in radian mode i got to go down here and highlight radians. All calculators, all scientific calculators have a degree in radian thing. For degree, it's DEG. For radian, it's RAD. Make sure it's in the right mode when you're doing this. Let's go ahead and find the cosine now of square root of 2 over 2. Now it's in radian mode. I can do it now. Cosine. Parentheses is already there. Alpha y equals enter. Square root of 2 over 2, parentheses, right arrow, parentheses, enter. Oh, there it is. So what I want you to do is, I want you to go ahead and do quick check number 3. Why didn't I get the exact same answer? Let's, let's, let's find out. Um... Hmm. Second function, square root. Let's find this out before I end this uh, thing. Square root of 2 divided by... Divided by 2 equals 707. And what happened with the sine? Let's see this. The sine of pi over 4. That's the problem. I did the wrong answer. I should have did the sine of pi over 4. 
A cosine of power before, I'm sorry. So let's go cosine. That was a mistake. Let's fix it. Cosine alpha y equals enter. Let's find pi. Second function arrow over 4. That's what I was supposed to do. I made a mistake. The answer was the square root of 2 over 2, not the cosine of square root of 2 over 2. Enter. There it is. That's more like it. So if I go back to degree measure, you're going to see that it's not going to be the same answer. Let me go back and redo that. So right now I'm going to go back to mode and go back to degree measure and see if I get the same answer. I'm going to put the calculator in degree, in degree mode and see if I get the same answer. So let's quit this. Now I'm in degree mode. Let's try to, try to cosine of pi over 4. See, I made a mistake before. I shouldn't have did the cosine of pi over 4. Alpha y equals, oops, clear. Alpha y equals enter. Seven function pi over four. I bet you I won't get seven or seven. If I do, there's a, there's a problem. It's in degree mode now. Look at the answer I got. You see, it's in degree mode. You're not gonna get the right answer. If you're doing radians, put the calculator in radian mode. If you're measuring angles and degrees, put the calculator in degree mode. Go ahead and do quick check number three. Your homework will be coming soon. Thank you.